Hello and welcome. My name is Jason and this is Heroes and Hops, a new monthly show where we review comics and beer and everything in between. We've got a great show planned for you today for our first episode. We're going to review some comics. We have a great beer picked out to review. Also have a special guest to discuss the Assassin's Creed franchise and how it ties into history and culture. Also, another very special guest to explain the style of beer we're drinking. So, hope you enjoy it. Sit back and relax. Alright, tonight's beer is Saison du Swamp from Gainesville's Swamp Head Brewery. This is their migrational series. Uh, stay tuned for later in the show where I review it and our special guest and beer expert will give us a little bit of insight on the style of beer. So let's see what we got here. Galactus. Nice golden flavor. So let's get started with the show. Alright, before we get into our show today, we'll just go over some comic and beer news over the past month. This past weekend, Captain America the Winter Soldier opened. It grossed $96 million in its opening weekend, which is the largest ever for an April opening. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely go check it out. It's one of the better Marvel movies uh, produced. In beer news... Monday, April 7th, was National Beer Day, which coincided with the 1933 repeal of Prohibition. So, I hope you celebrate it accordingly. Now it's time for my favorite part of the show. Well, maybe second favorite, uh, next to the beer. Uh, the comic reviews. First up, Batman Eternal Number 1 by Scott Snyder, James Tynan IV, with art by Jason Faber. This is a new weekly series from DC Comics featuring Batman. Future issues will feature some of his other supporting cast and allies such as Robin and Catwoman and Batgirl. This first issue features Batman and Commissioner Gordon. Uh, the art is very good in this one. I liked it a lot. We get a very grim picture of where this series is headed with a Gotham City on fire and Batman bloodied and tied to a broken bat symbol. The uh, ending uh, sets up a very interesting story arc for one of the uh, popular characters in the series. If you like Batman and like some of Scott Snyder's other work on the other Batman titles or American Vampire, this is worth checking out. Next up, from Marvel, we have Iron Fist, The Living Weapon. Uh, Iron Fist is not a super popular character with mainstream audiences, but he's a... A uh, ninja that trained in an ancient city in the Far East who comes back to America. This series focuses on his past and uh, he gets drawn back into where he learned his art and gained his power. This is written by Care Andrews, also dr drawn by Care Andrews as well. It's um, okay, I like it just alright. I'm not super familiar with Iron Fist. This might be good for people that are major Iron Fist fans, but for the casual reader, you might want to pass on it. And finally, for my pick of the week, is Amazing Spider-Man Family Business by James Robinson and Mark Wade, with art by Gabrielle Del Otto. This is an original graphic novel from Marvel Comics. It features Spider-Man and the Kingpin. Uh, Peter Parker is being hunted down by somebody, 
and the only person that can help him is his long lost sister, which is a surprise to us, the readers, as well as Peter. But she may be his sister, or maybe she's not. You'll have to read it to find out. A lot of action, good art, more of a globe trotting adventure like James Bond or Indiana Jones, not your typical Spider Man story. A little pricey but worth the price of admission. It's my pick of the week and I think you'll enjoy it. Hi, I have Professor Jeff Knapp from Florida State College in Jacksonville. Jeff is a humanities teacher as well as a Latin teacher. He speaks fluid Italian, has traveled Italy numerous times as a tourist and a tour guide. When he's not teaching, Jeff also is an avid video game fan. Uh, his favorite is Assassin's Creed. So Jeff's going to talk to us about Assassin's Creed. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Jason. All right, I poured a beer for you. I hope you enjoy it. So, Jeff, which um, games in the series have you played? Uh, I've actually played them all. Um, the first one I played with our lovely producer Trey. Uh, it was his. It was it was Assassin's Creed Two, and then I played a couple others in the series that were also set in Italy. Eventually, went back and did one, which I'll never need to play that one again. Okay. <laughs> and then have played through you know the latest installment, Black Flag. Okay. Very good. Well, the uh, game seems to be popular among critics and your avid gamers. It sold over 55 million copies worldwide. Why do you think it's such a popular series with people? <clears throat> well, I mean, I know why I like it. Uh, I like the historical elements. I like the open game world. I know that's not unique anymore, but I remember you know, I used to play Prince of Persia. That was... Uh, you know, a fun game to a point, but it mm -hmm. sort of, you know, it was, it was very limited right. in what it could do. And so the first time I played in Assassin's Creed, I liked the open game world, the, the choice of how to follow everything. And of course, I was sold on the historical settings because that's a, a lot of what I do for a living. But I mean, that's why I like it. I can't say why everyone likes it. Wes, why do you think it's popular? Nothing is sacred. Everything is permitted. Yeah, that's a good answer. That that makes sense. And you pirates, bitches! Assassin's Creed has been uh, classified as a historical action adventure role playing type game. Uh, being well versed in the history of Italy, do you think it does a good job of portraying the settings, landscape, characters, history of that time period? Yeah, it's really good. Um, at least for the, the games that are set in Italy, which I'm more familiar with, I think it's highly accurate, especially the big monuments. You know, of course, on any game like this, a lot of it has to be generic, you know, the you know, random rooftops and, and things like this, and you can't recreate it uh, exactly. But as far as the monuments, uh, where major events occur, uh, landmarks, it's highly accurate. And the history is really good, too. I mean, this is one of the things I, I always loved about the series is that it gives you historical events, uh, personalities, and also maintains its fiction in a way that's convincing. You know, I, <clears throat> as far as conspiracy theories go, like that's the sort of thing that I think is fun, but I don't believe much in them. But the games do an excellent job of giving you a plausible alternate reality or a, or a history that's below the surface that uh, you know, can't be found in standard sources. So yeah, I think it does a great job. From what I understand, you've visited many sites in Italy, Rome, Florence, Venice. Um, what can you tell us about those places in relation to the game? Well, when I travel these places, uh, it's fun for me because, you know, hey, let's face it, if, you know, I love the games this much and I'm an adult, I'm you know, pretty much a nerd too. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I love going to a place like the Pantheon in Rome and you know it's a it's an amazing structure, it's the best preserved building in the ancient world, anywhere in the world. But 
I can't help it. When I go into the Pantheon, I think, you know, ah, that's where I dropped down from the dome and assassinated a guy. And those things are fun. And also, it's, uh, it's enjoyable for me while I'm traveling to see how these places have remained the same and how they've changed from the time period that the, the games are set in. And that's a lot of fun, too. And if there are other people with me who are familiar with this, you know, I teach a, a class, for example, uh, on Rome from the beginning until now. And so sometimes there are some places that, you know, I can point out that were in famous movies like, you know, Angels and Demons or uh, Roman Holiday or things like this. But, you know, you've always got some people who are gamers and who are familiar with these things and you, you can uh, point out these things too, you know, that, you know, that's where, you know, Da Vinci's workshop was supposed to be or, you know, things like that. So okay. that's a lot of fun. Do you know what the series has in store for us next? I, I know some, and there's there's some that I think no one no one really knows, at least now out in the general public. Uh, and I'm uh, it's a little bittersweet for me because what I understand is the next installment they're going to be publishing two different games. Uh, oh. One will be exclusive to the next generation platforms, which I'm not ready to invest in yet. <laughs> Um, and that one is, they're doing something that I've been wanting them to do since the very first time I played the game, and that will be set, uh, from what I understand, in uh, revolutionary France uh, during the French Revolution. Oh, okay. And I think that just, you know, that fits the themes of the series perfectly, you know, liberation, freedom versus tyranny, and all that, that sort of stuff. And wow, that's exciting to me, but I'm not going to go out and buy a PS4 because of one game. Um, they're supposed to be uh, publishing another one for the PS3, Xbox 360, but I don't know what it is yet. Uh, okay. now I wish they would do a parallel game, but from what I understand, they're not. Okay, that's interesting. PC Master Race! It's <laughs> <laughs> interesting. And before we close out this segment, if you want to give our viewers a little bit of information about the tours you can conduct in Europe, and how they can find out that information. Sure, um, as uh, something do I, I do on the side, I do some freelance tour guiding. I will be leading a, a tour next March, which will be basically a week in Rome. So again, especially if you've played Assassin's Creed Brotherhood or Assassin's Creed 2, which takes place partly in Rome, come with me, we'll see all the sites, I'll show you where all the stuff happened. Probably the best place to reach me is just an uh, email, and uh, through the magic of YouTube, that will appear on the screen in front of me. All right. If you want more information, check out Jeff's website email on the front of the screen here. And uh, thanks for coming, Jeff. States, you know, I'd like you to stick around when we do our beer review. Get your thoughts on the, the beer we had. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for the segment that I know you all have been waiting for, the beer review. I have my beer review panel with me to lead the discussions of very special guest. Uh, she's very special because she's my girlfriend. This is Rachel. She has a wealth of beer knowledge as well as being a home brewer. Rachel, welcome. Uh, Jeff is um, here as well to give his thoughts on the beer and see what he thinks about the beer I've chosen for tonight. Uh, Rachel, what can you tell us about the style of beer we're drinking? So, Saison's can vary a lot. Um, they're usually light in color, they usually have some spice notes and maybe some citrusy notes. Um, they can range from being sour to not really tart or sour at all. Um, sometimes they have a lot more funky earthiness, sometimes described as like coarse blankets. Um, sometimes it can be a lot more clean flavor. Um, so there is a lot of variation. It's a Belgian style okay. and typically is um, fermented with wild yeast. So you can kind of get some interesting flavors in there. Okay. Well, we're, if, a lot of viewers probably noticed we're drinking out of kind of a different shaped beer glass. Uh, what can you tell us about these glasses and why we're drinking this particular beer? out of a glass like this. So if you have a tulip glass like this or a snifter or something like that, it's going to help hold some of the aroma from the beer so when you drink it you can smell it a lot more mm -hmm. and then you can kind of appreciate some of those aromatics um, from the yeast and the spice characteristics. Okay. And again, this is the 
Saison du Swamp from Swamp Head Brewery. They're out of Gainesville, Florida. You can get more information at swamphead.com. And remember, even though we're drinking beer, we're all over 21. If you're going to drink, drink responsibly. Unless so, you're in Germany. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, Rachel, as our expert and our special guest, what, what are your thoughts on the beer? Um, I do like it a lot. Tasty. She's a slow drinker, folks. I am. So it does kind of have some peppery notes, mm -hmm. and um, actually it comes from the yeast, um, not from uh, actual pepper added to the beer usually. Um, okay. And it does have a little bit of um, citrusy character to it as well. And it is um, moderate levels of alcohol. You can get a little bit of the heat from the alcohol in it. Okay. Jeff, what do you think about, about the beer? I think it's delicious. Uh, I normally don't like a beer that's too hoppy, and you know this doesn't have that, obviously. Right. Um, I like a saison. Uh, my favorite saison is fall, which makes it a little bit difficult for me to be drinking a beer from Gainesville. Yes. But I have to say this beer smells a lot better than the town itself. I agree. I agree. Uh, as for me, I really enjoy it. I'm more of a hop head. Um, but this is a very refreshing beer. You do get some spice notes, a little bit of floral. It's got a nice color, a little bit of aroma. It's very refreshing beer. I enjoy it. It gets thumbs up for me. Thank you to my guests for joining me on the show. Thank you to Rachel for enlightening us on the beer we were drinking. And thank you to Jeff for educating us on Assassin's Creed and some history. Next month, we should be filming from Hangout Fest in Gulf Shores, Alabama. A lot of great bands lined up to play. Probably visit a couple breweries while we're over there. Maybe get some comic books worked in there. Uh, coming up in May, also some things you might want to check out. May 3rd, we have Amazing Spider-Man 2 opening up. And May 4th is Free Comic Book Day, so you might want to go check those things out. Hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next month.